I'm standing by the box office, what is arguably one of the icons of the Palace Verdes Peninsula, the Norris Theatre. During its history, it's been the home and still is the home to some wonderful theatre plays and some marvellous musicals. But what about its history? How did it all begin? Come with me and we'll get the answers. We're sitting in one of the most exciting and, for me personally, interesting uh, locations that I've done on Armchair Traveller. We're sitting in the glorious Norris Theatre and we're talking with a very good-looking lady called, it sounds like some English lady, Lady Julie Mo Reynolds. Um, tell, <laughs> tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do and a little bit about the theatre. Well, um, I grew up here in Palos Verdes. Um, and my mother, Joan Moe, was the co-founder of the theater. And now, I, after many, many years of being involved, I think I, think I was involved since third grade from fun, for wow. fundraising this theater, because it was my mother's dream to bring theater, professional theater and educational theater to the Hill. Was your mother an actress? I mean, what got her interested in, in starting this? Well, she attended Northwestern University, and she studied not only an English major, but a performing arts major. She went to school with greats like Cloris Leachman, Gary Marshall, Bob She Wright. went to school with him. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, yeah, it was pretty exciting. So when she moved out here, she did modeling and acting, and then she met my father and got married. And obviously, we went to school in the local schools. Well, unlike back east, where we have a lot of old historical schools with large theaters, she saw the kids performing on multi-purpose room stages. And she thought, you know what? Our kids deserve more than that. And she also thought that she wanted to expose us to the arts. So whatever was playing in the local area, PB High School, Rolling Hills High School, Merrill Est, Torrance, El Camino, she would take us to all the different shows in the area and, and visit and see what the kids are doing. And she said, these kids are too good to perform on stages like this. You know, something like this never happens unless you have money. So, I mean, your mother must have been a tremendous sort of visionary, but she must have, I'm assuming, have access to some money. Well, she was a visionary, and she did come from a good place, but she had wonderful friends, and she was very well networked on the Hill. She started out working in the Planning Commission in the Rolling Hills Estates and moved on up into the City Council and Parks and Activities Commission. She went around all of those things, which was really perfect when you're, you think of bringing a theater to the Hill because you need people involved. You also need to know all the rules and regulations. So during that, she met people like Ron Florence and Ernie Hahn that wanted to build this beautiful uh, mall that's sitting right adjacent to the theater. And through negotiations and uh, a little talk, uh, they donated the land here, Ron and Ernie Hahn. Yes, in finding sponsors, and I guess that's the word, sponsors, um, were the show people, I mean, people from Hollywood involved in this? Somewhat. Um, we did have a lot of people come in and help us design this wonderful theater. This theater stage, you know, although we only have 450 seats, which creates a really intimate setting, yeah. our stage is as long as like 90% of the Broadway stages in New York. Wow. So we have the fly space, we have the full orchestra pit underneath and the dressing rooms. This is fully set up for prof professional theater. So it, when people come in like Sarah Vaughn and Cloris Leachman and all these wonderful professional actors, they say it's like playing in their living room. Although they have all this stage, they get this intimate interaction with the audience and it's really quite wonderful. I cannot believe people watching, you know, wouldn't know about the Norris, but first of all, how long has it been here and you mentioned some very famous people. Do a lot of additional people like that love to come here? Yes, they do. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of famous people live on our hill, and they do yeah. frequently attend our theater, which is exciting. And uh, I think it's important to them because they feel it's they're giving back to the, our community in the arts. But yes, we have some really exciting news because it is our 30th anniversary. 
How do you decide what um, productions you put on here? And for people that don't know, there's musicals, there's plays, some sad, some you know humorous, and then there's also a whole range of celebrities that come in here. Do you have meetings where you meet with certain people and say, we need this, we need that? I mean, it's a sort of a mix of a lot of different things. Well, first of all, we have the most amazing artistic director named James Grusing. He's been with us, I think, over 10 years. And he helps us decide where, what we're going to have. And he brings it to our board of directors. Our board of directors is a really active board of directors. It's not just sitting back as a rubber stamp saying yes. They're involved in what they think the community wants to see. And that's always a real, it's tough because we have, we have, in the Norse, we have a legacy of people that have attended, and then we have some of the younger generation that we're trying to attract. So right now, we're in this segue period of trying to not you know, offend the legacy people by bringing stuff that's way too edgy, yet bring enough edge that the younger people want to come. That's a very interesting comment about young people. I mean, when you think about young people today, you think of, you know, iPads and iPhones and all that other stuff and texting and all that other stuff. So trying to get young people involved, is that a challenge? You know, it has been in the past. In the last year and a half, though, we've been really fortunate. We also have this wonderful education facility, and we bring in over 1,500 students just locally working on singing, acting, dancing. We have How many? 1,500 just kids, individual kids through our doors. On top of that, we have an outreach program that goes into the inner city, and for kids that can't afford to have that type of training, we outreach to them and we bring them into our facility. We also have uh, Ready, Willing, and Able, which is for um, different challenges that kids might have, and they have singing and dancing, which is quite heartwarming to see. But anyway, those parents have now started to step up and say, you know what, I realize this is part of our community and they want to take a part and, and be a part of bringing it for the next 30 years. I think the interesting thing is, you know, when you look at this wonderful stage, and I feel so much, I feel so much at home here, if you think about this and, and you think about the audience here, the fact that you have musicals and the fact that you have plays, what a wonderful diversity. And then you also have solo performances. I mean, this is a real all-encompassing thing. And what a wonderful place for the people of Palos Verdes, and I'm sure other places, to come here and see and enjoy all that. Not only that, but I don't think people really realize that our professional productions are all equity professional actors. Really? Just like uh, we're going to be having the producers here, which I don't know if you've seen the producers, but it's an amazing and wonderful musical. And we have the broad, a few of the people that were on Broadway actually performing here. And what is greater than to drive a half a mile or maybe a mile to go see theater, you don't pay for parking, and you get the top quality theater that Broadway has. So, I mean, it's really, it's really a wonderful thing we have here. And I think more people need to know what type of community asset that we have. What sort of prices, you know, when you think about Broadway and in, indeed from where I come from, London, when you think about the prices of theatres and to go and see a show, sometimes I just, I cannot believe they're so expensive. The price of a, of a seat here ranges from what to what? It generally is around uh, between 40 and $45. Wow. Really inexpensive. But that also goes on to the fundraising. We fundraise over $700,000 a year to keep this operation. So it is an, a real community asset, but we also have community involvement on raising funds so that this stays here forever. Is there a secret, and I'm sure you probably wouldn't want to reveal it on television, but is there a secret to fundraising? I mean, when you think of all the organizations that want money, that need money, is there some little sort of thing that uh, turns people on? Well, I think if you think about it, the arts really adds color to our lives. Amen. And without having the arts in our lives, what would we have? So when people think about that and realize that like all the arts are being taken out of our schools, how do, how do we expose ourselves and our children to that beautiful color? Not only the performing arts, but even, you know, uh, paintings, etc. So I think when we bring that home to them and realize what music does, I mean, they say that when you listen to music and you actually study like my kids do, it actually helps them learn. So that part, bringing that home to somebody, you know, you play a symphony. I mean, it makes you feel good. 
you you don't want to lose that. And so when we talk about that and say this is part of your community, it's not my theater. It's everybody's theater. It's just as much Joe's and Bob's and Sally's. And then they realize that and they go, wow, this, 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 is, this is ours. This is neat. Let's take care of it. And I don't want to forget the most important thing. The Norris Center has been here from the beginning. And we wouldn't be here without their continued generous support. I want to really thank the Norris Foundation. I never met this lady's mother, but um, listening to what she said about her mother, her mother obviously had a lot of passion and a lot of interest in all this. And I can see from talking to Julie that you have inherited your mother's enthusiasm and your absolute, I guess, overwhelming love for this whole project. Yes, I have. I, I have big shoes to fill. My mother passed uh, last June, um, on June 8th. and. And um, I knew probably for the last five years that I was going to step in these shoes. Sorry, I'm just a little emotional about that. She was, she was so wonderful. And she passed, passed on this jewel to us. Isn't it great to have a dream like that? And not only to have a dream like that, but to make that dream come true. Yeah, not many people get to say that. And she did. She had a vision. She had a dream. And she had amazing friends and an amazing community that brought this here. So, yeah, she, she was a special woman. And I was very, very lucky to be your daughter. And I, I hope I carry on the tradition in the right way. So next time when you're wondering what's on in the theater, come check out the Norris. Until next time, I'm John Clayton with Armchair Traveler. And thanks so much for watching.